Hello and welcome to Afro Space with me, Adetun Giomotola, and my co-host, Nyasha Grace. Today we have with us, joining us all the way from Habarone, the capital of diamond-rich Botswana, is a lady by the name of Lebo Mansa. Uh, Lebo, welcome to Afro Space. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for having me here. You're very welcome. Now, Lebo, let me just share with our viewers your very powerful profile. As I said before we commence, even Kofi Annan will be intimidated by your profile. <laughs> and so here goes your educational background. You've got a master's in business administration from the University of Botswana. And that master's you backed in 20, well, it, it says here August 2009 to December 2014. And of course, before that, you had a master's of science in biodiversity conservation and management at the almighty University of Oxford, England. And under that, it says you highly intensive, it's a highly intensive management course that had exposed you to fundamental biodiversity conservation issues and enhanced your analytical planning and research skills and other skills were learned, including strategic conservation, planning and biodiversity, as well as environmental assessment. In 2006 to 2007, you had a postgraduate diploma in education, which is called the PGDE in geography at the University of Botswana. And you obtained a distinction, wow, distinction with a GPA average of 4.6 on a 5.0 scale. A very, it was a very practical program that provided you with academic and professional training necessary to be an educator. And before that, as far back as 2002, you had a BA in Environmental Science, University of Botswana, and you obtained a second class upper division once again, a GPA of 4.4 on a 5.0 scale. Of course, you've done other courses uh, with your Kavango Diamond Company Youth Entrepreneurship Program at the University of Stellenbosch Business School in South Africa, one of the best uh, business schools in Africa, I might add. And before that, you also are a Mandela Washington Fellowship. You did the Mandela Washington Fellowship where you had leadership in business and entrepreneurship from the University of Notre Dame in South Bend, Indiana. I know a gentleman from South Bend, Indiana. He ran wow. for president. So that puts you in fine company. And of course, in terms of your other awards, in 2007, you were awarded the Shell Centenary Scholarship to study for the MSc Biodiversity conservation and management at the University of Oxford. Your work experience, you've been a managing director of Chemdri Gaborone, where you provide strategic scholarship or leadership rather, and daily management for the team, as well as administration and marketing in an eco-friendly cleaning business. And in March 2015 to September, you were executive secretary so as registrar at Botswana Environmental Assessment Practitioners Association, and you were reporting to the Board of Trustees. This is your life, uh, Label Manson. <laughs> I think listening to someone else read your profile is like, is that me, really? <laughs> there you are. 
Yeah. So well yeah, done. We so yes, sir, over to you. Hear someone else. Yeah, I mean, uh, Levo, you're such a high flyer and um, just hearing your profile and um, picking up on some of your achievements there, having graduated top of your class and your environmental sciences um, program at the University of Botswana, getting a scholarship to uh, do a master's at Oxford. Uh, really, um, you have been an achiever and we want to find out from you, give our viewers a sense of how you became such an overachiever. I think I was raised that way. Um, I, my parents have always been push, have always pushed me to achieve, and I've been rewarded for achievement. I think partly getting those rewards for achievement from my parents was was one of the things that pushed me to achieve. And um, I'm also naturally academically talented. I think that's a talent for me. I love learning. It's just keeps me sane to learn something new. I'm always looking, I'm always learning something new and I enjoy learning. And I think that is one of the reasons why I, I've been an achiever because it's something that I enjoy doing. It's something that makes me feel alive. Like I'm doing something. I'm very much goal oriented. I decide what I want to do and then I make plans on how to achieve that. That is how I just function. Now, uh, Lebo, can you tell our viewers, you've gone through a lot. I mean, you're still very young, but you've gone through a lot in spite of your successes. You've had these huge challenges in your life from, uh, you know, marriage that didn't work to the almost near death illness that affected your husband, uh, who you claim, uh, you share rather, that is the love of your life, a friend that you married. And then of course, your young daughter, um, you know, who was staying with your mom at the time, suffered, um, you know, tremendously, uh, tremendous damage, true burns. How were you able to bounce back from all this very painful adversity at such a, you know, young age? How have you been able to do that? I think I've learned over time that everyone goes through something in life. Yeah. Every, we are all the same. We all go through difficulties in life. And I've learned to accept what is happening to me because I believe that everyone is going through something. It's not just me. And I don't throw pity parties for myself. I just accept my situation and say, oh, this is happening to me. And I accept that. And I, I do a lot of self-talk, I must say. I talk to myself a lot. I counsel myself. And that is one of the things that has helped me get through difficult times. Just acknowledging the fact that you're not the only one going through difficulty. And also being able to share my experiences with other people, you learn that you're not alone and you connect with other people and let them know that you are not alone. And that is one of the things that have helped me to heal from my, my challenges because as human beings, we were made to connect. And as soon as you start being in your head and you don't share your experiences with other people or keep your experience as a secret, it starts eating you up. And once you start talking about your situation, you take power away from the situation. Now it becomes a situation. It doesn't become a part of you because if you keep it to yourself, then it becomes you you become a part of the situation and you start thinking that you're the only person that is experiencing that and you start feeling ashamed. I think one of the things that helped me take shame away from what from my experiences is sharing the experience. And that is why I started one of, uh, of the blog that I started on Facebook, just to share um, my authentic experience with life, that this is happening and it happens, we all experience different um, situations that are difficult, that are difficult to the human spirit. But if you talk about them, we connect and then we can heal together from that. Wow. Um, Lebo, that's so profound, so much wisdom, so much truth in the stuff that you're sharing. And, um, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's no wonder, you know, you talk about confidence as well. Um, because it's on, on yeah. some of your blogs, you talk a lot about confidence, you talk a lot about self-esteem, uh, you encourage parents to raise children who are confident, 
And uh, you've also highlighted that confidence and self-esteem are necessary attributes to achieve success in life. Um, tell us why those two uh, characteristics, why are they so dear to your heart? Absolutely. I believe that um, confidence and self-esteem are everything. First, they determine how you experience life. They determine how you relate with other people. If you're if you're self confident, you you become independent in your thinking because your your thinking or your opinion doesn't depend on what other people think. Mm -hmm. You choose yourself all the time because you don't care what other people think about you. So I believe that for you to be able to say, um, even though I'm trained in environmental science, I'm going to choose a career in an entrepreneurship. You need a lot of self-confidence to do that. You need to believe in yourself so, so that you are able to make a decision that is not common. You are able to be a trail, trailblazer because you are choosing to take a direction that no one else has chosen before. So, because when we grow up, we are raised to follow a certain path by our parents and our society, the way we are raised. We are raised to, to go to school and then find a job and then build a house and then buy a car and then what? But I decided that I'm not gonna do what society tells me to do. I'm going to do what my spirit feels is right to do. And I believe that every child needs to be raised in that way, that they can choose what they want to do in life. And they can only do that when they are self-confident and when they have self-esteem. For example, if you raise a child in a way that doesn't build their self-esteem, they're most likely to, to do everything that you tell them to do. And one of the things that I, I talk about in my blog is that when you raise a child um, to be confident and have a healthy sense of self-esteem, you cannot say to them that you need to have confidence and self-esteem. It the beliefs they form about themselves come from the interactions that you have with them. So you have to be conscious about how you interact with the children every day. Every moment is a defining moment in the beliefs that the child forms about themselves and about life. Mm. Very powerful. Okay, we're learning. Okay, so you have, uh, you're wearing a lot of hats. I mean, you're a businesswoman, you know, you're an entrepreneur, you are into green economy, you are environmentalist and so on. And then you set up yes. this, uh, you pioneered this green cleaning services in Botswana, uh, where you, you know, you're providing cleaning services in a green way, uh, or rather we say eco-friendly way, and you provide certified, yeah. eco-friendly certified products. What inspired you to start? I mean, I'm aware of your background in environmental engineering and all of that, but what inspired you to start a green business? And uh, can you share with our viewers, um, you know, your journey, your business journey? Because they say things don't just happen, right? So can you give us a sense? Yeah. I think the inspiration for me to start a green cleaning business is came from the fact that I've always when I look back, I've always been business minded, but the way I was raised, I was not raised to be a business person. I was raised to look for a job, find a job and start working in the office. But when I started uh, um, my green cleaning business, it was partly putting two, parts of, two pieces of me together. Like I have a background in environmental science. I care about the environment. I care about protecting the environment. But at the same time, deep down inside of me, I'm an entrepreneur. So I brought those two parts of me together to start a business that speaks to me as a person and also as an environmentalist with my environmentalism background. Mm, okay. Wow. I mean, I think it's, it's fortunate for um, someone to be able to marry their passions and um, have the confidence and the self-esteem to actually go after them and uh, to actualize them. So, I mean, big kudos to you, Lebo. Now, um, you. your other hat is um, obviously you're passionate about children and um, you are a founder of Cherished Kids. 
Can you tell us about yes. what uh, Cherished Kids is about and uh, what difference are you trying to make? Cherished Kids is a new business. It's still very at its very early stages. Mm -hmm. It's a business I started um, in January this year. It's a child transportation business. So what I found out was that most uh, mothers actually who are working still take time off their work to go pick up their children from school or drop them at school in the morning. And that takes away from their productive time. And one of, that doesn't mean that there are not, no services available in the market that they could use so that they could focus on their work. And when I did the interviews, I found out that most mothers still prefer to do that, to transport their children because they are not happy with the safety of their children, safety and security and the amount of time that they take in transit when they are being picked up by school buses. So I decided to come up with a service that could fix those pain points so that mothers can continue to work and focus on their work while we take care of their children, transporting them between home and school. Because we as women face challenges that we have to juggle between picking up the children and also being at work. And then when a man and a woman compete for the same position, which would, most cases would be a leadership position, chances are that a man is more focused at work because he doesn't have to juggle between picking up the children, his wife, is most likely to be doing that for him. And he focuses at work. When there's a competition for a leadership position at work, where a woman and a man compete, a man is most likely to get the job because he is focused at work. So my service is basically aimed at trying to help me, women who are working to focus on their work while we provide a safe um, service that is timely to ensure that the kids get home in time as opposed to taking more than two hours in transit to get time with the available services. So we're trying to make life easier for mothers who are working. Interesting. Just, you know, I, I enjoy a little debate. So, you know, a lady called Dr. Ungozi Okonjo Iwela, who is going for the WTO job. She's going no. to probably be the first. In fact, the two people that are at the top, as in the final shortlist of candidates for the World Trade mm -hmm. Organization, are women. So I think things are changing for women. Yeah. So you can yeah. take comfort in the fact that things are changing for women. But you're quite right that in most cases, women carry a lot of challenges as mothers. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's not easy to juggle. But I'm with you on all that. But things are changing. We thank God for the changes we see. But the question that I wanted to pose to you next, Lebo, is that uh, you are pursuing the uh, pageant for Miss yeah. Miss Botswana, and Mrs. Uh, Botswana, yes. that you will win that pageant, and hopefully you. <laughs> you do win it. That you will then go on to contest in Miss Universe and be like the Zozimbi Nituzi, uh, yes. win that as well. So we're very we're rooting for you. But well, the question Thank we would you. like to ask is, what made you, you know, I mean, given your background, academic excellence and all of that, environmental sciences, what made you decide to go into a, be a beauty pageant of this nature, of the size and scale, but also should you win this pageant, what are you going to do in, the, in those roles? What are you seeking to achieve with those roles? Um, I should mention that I've, I started competing in pageants when I was 11 years old and, at, and then I stopped when I was 18. And then I went on with other things in my life. So I've always had a passion for pageants. Actually, at, when, I was in, when I was 14 or 15, someone from Botswana called Mpulekwe Lakobe won Miss Universe. And that is when I really started wanting to become Miss Universe or Miss, Miss World. And then I lost on that opportunity growing up because I stopped pursuing that passion. But when I found out about the opportunity, Mrs. Botswana, 
I decided to go for it. I actually started in 2018. I competed in 2018 and oh, I didn't win. Wow. Yeah, I, did, I, I was the first princess. But what I wanted was actually to be crowned Mrs. Botswana for this reason. Even though that I've been academically talented and have done other things, I still feel that they, I could still pursue other things. There are so many things to do in life. Life is full of fun things to do. And this is part of me making myself happy, doing something that I've always wanted to do when I was a young girl growing up. Secondly, it's about, for me, it's about, I've achieved so much in life. I've had so many opportunities. I've been awarded scholarships to study abroad. I have, I've done the Mandela Washington Fellowship, like so many opportunities out there in the world that people are not even aware of. And also when I reinvented myself from environmentalism to entrepreneurship, I've done several programs that have helped me grow into entrepreneurship, into developing myself and growing. And I feel that I've amassed a wealth of knowledge and experience that I would like to share with other people and say, you know, look beyond your circumstances, look beyond where you are, because there are so many opportunities out there that you could pursue without even paying a cent. Mm. Without paying a cent, without paying any money from your pocket, they are available for you. Reach out and develop yourself and grow and experience life in different ways. So partly, this for me is to share my story. I would like to share my story. My life story has, has so many turns and twists and turns that of challenges that people go through. And I just want to share with them that it's okay. Everyone is going through stuff. And there are so many opportunities that you could use to develop yourself. Because currently in Botswana, we are facing um, a problem of unemployment. There are a lot of unemployed graduates in the streets. And I would want to say, I would like to share with them, look at me, I studied environmental science, but when I didn't get a job as an environmentalist, I started something else. And I've been able to grow myself in that field. And we should not just be looking at someone to create jobs for us. We should be creating jobs. Let's work together and create jobs and solve our problems in Africa and in the world. Wow. 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 That's incredible. Uh, what comes to mind for me, uh, Lebo, is to whom much is given, much is expected. And it sounds like you're doing exactly that. And to finish off our interview, finally, um, we want to find out from you, You've shared so much wisdom with us. You've shared so much passion and inspiration, um, you know, your life force and just the way that you've been able to confront life and um, just take charge and just steer your own life has really come across strongly and um, truly is inspiring. And uh, we want to know finally that what is the legacy that you would like to leave behind? Um, what do you want to be remembered for after having lived this amazing, robust, adventure-filled life. What is in the history books um, next to Lebo's name? I would like to be remembered as someone who lived life whole, wholeheartedly, mm. who wanted to live to her fullest potential. Like, I want to explore life to my fullest potential. I want to be lying on my deathbed and, and look back and say, I have lived. I have lived life and I want to share my life experiences to inspire other people to explore their potential and live extraordinary lives. And that is what I want to be remembered for. Interesting. I will sum it up in one statement. Lebo Manson, she came, she saw, and she conquered. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely great. No, we're glad to uh, have you share with us your profound experience, your values, you know, your achievements, and also your plans for the future. Uh, I believe this is what we believe at Afrospace, that what we are doing to share um, African experiences across the board, uh, regardless of genre, whether you're a minor, a poet, 
a lawyer, a banker, a musician. This is what we're passionate about because there are a billion stories to tell in Africa. So with those words, I'll pass over to Yasha because normally we do say our goodbyes in vernacular. So Yasha, you take it away. Okay, all right. So for me, I'll say my goodbye in Shona and that's a Zimbabwean language. And uh, it is Sarai Shakanaka. And that translates, stay well. Okay, and from me, Adetunjia Mutala, I'll say Odabo, which is Yoruba, and Kachifo is Igbo, and Sekobe is Awusa, all the three major languages from Nigeria. Over to you, Lebo. And in Sudan, I'll say Kya Leboha, Khosiyane, and that means thank you, it is well. Mandla, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you.